Welcome to The Advocate, a platform for conversations with those advocating for business in the Charlotte region right now. Hi, my name is Kelly O'Brien, and I serve as the Chief Advocacy and Strategy Officer at the Charlotte Regional Business Alliance and the President of the Charlotte Regional Business Alliance Foundation. And in my job, one of the great things I get to do is work with the best in class government affairs specialists here in Charlotte and the Charlotte region. And today I'm excited to be able to chat with Jennifer Richmond. Jennifer serves as the Vice President of Government Affairs at Co-Consolidated. Jennifer, thank you for joining me today. Of course, thank you for having me, Kelly. You know, Jennifer, again, you know, I love our advocacy committee and I'm so grateful for your time and commitment to the work that we're doing. But I'm really fascinated about your career because you've served in both the public and private sectors, as I have. And I'd love to um, hear a little bit about what you've done before assuming this role. Absolutely. So um, my career path has not been a straight kind of, you know, path um, since the beginning. It's been a little bit of a a winding road. Um, I did start my career as a newspaper reporter in Northeast Ohio. I covered um, all things um, across the board, including, you know, crime, police, um, trials, uh, politics, so kind of the gamut. Um, It was such a great learning experience for me to get started in that way really helped me hone my communication skills, um, met a ton of, you know, wonderful people. um, And it was just a really interesting uh, path to start. Um, I then did transition over to uh, the public sector. I worked for a county prosecutor as a public information officer. And then after a few years, I transitioned to a public information officer role with the state of Ohio um, for the Department of Transportation. So I went from covering courts, um, you know, capital cases, managing national media attention to talking about roads and, um, you know, all all of those fun things that go along with that. So that was kind of my, my, uh, I guess, beginning of my career. Um, in in politics, because during that time, I also had the opportunity to work on political campaigns and kind of dip my toe into that water a little bit as well. Um, from there, to your point, as, as you mentioned, I kind of transitioned into the private sector. Uh, so in 20, I guess it was 2007, I transitioned to a role as a communications manager in Virginia. I was hired by the Coors Brewing Company and worked at their plant, um, really managing communications, internal, external. um, And it was a really interesting time for that company as they then, within about six months of my start date, uh, entered a joint venture with Miller Brewing Company. And the company, as we know it today, you know, they became Miller Coors, they've evolved to again be Molson Coors. um, But that opportunity really provided me Uh, with a lot of experience in in corporate communications. Um, I also did a little bit of GR work in that space, um, Mm -hmm. you know, building local relationships. And I think during that time, I really learned the importance and value of building those strong relationships with leaders in the local community. Um, And then I guess fast forward to to about 2011, I accepted a role with the Coca-Cola company. I was uh, actually their communications director for their Great Lakes region. I was based in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, And I worked at the Coca-Cola company for about six years. Um, And then most recently, now we're up to date. um, I joined Coke Consolidated in 2017. um, And we can talk about the difference between those two companies here in a minute. But um, I am in my current role. I started as a director of government affairs in Ohio, covering up a handful of states for the company. And I was very fortunate um, to be able to transition uh, last year to my new role here in Charlotte as the Vice President of Government Affairs. Well, as a um, transplant from the Midwest to Charlotte, I'm sure you agree with me. The city is so beautiful and what a treat it is to have such milder winters. 
you know, Jennifer, you just um, mentioned, and I really do want to um, help our audience understand because this is such an important distinction. Help us understand what the difference is between Coca-Cola Company and Coke Consolidated. Right. So it's a common question. We get that all the time. Um, you know, you as a consumer go to the store, you buy a, a, a pack of Coke. Um, you may not know that there is a, a difference. Um, However, the way our system is set up, it's a franchise system. So you have Coke bottlers across the country. I work for Coca-Cola Consolidated. We are the largest Coca-Cola bottler in the United States. Our territory, our franchise territory is about 14 states, including Washington, DC. So we have the exclusive right to make, bottle, distribute, sell uh, Coca-Cola products in that territory. We buy our syrup from the Coca-Cola company, and they also do much of the marketing. So that is the difference. So when you say syrup, is that a key ingredient or is, is that what it is? So that's a key ingredient. It's the, the basis of Coca-Cola, if you will. So it's the primary ingredient that we use. It's that secret formula that everyone talks about. Um, and that's where we get that, that syrup. Uh, from the Coke company. And so with the, um, with the, with the Coca-Cola Consolidated, you're headquartered here in Charlotte, this franchise for the 14 states that you mentioned, correct? Yes, we are headquartered here in Charlotte. Uh, we have about 30 facilities across North and South Carolina alone. Um, 16,000 employees across our territory. Um, and about, I believe we have um, 5,000 teammates just in the Carolinas. And so a big portion of this is manufacturing, correct? It is. We have several manufacturing locations. We also have several distribution centers. Um, so, you know, our manufacturing facilities, our teammates do a wonderful job of putting out quality, um, refreshing beverages each and every day made right here in the Carolinas. And, you know, I hear from so many of the investors at the Charlotte Regional Business Alliance that it's really difficult to find talent. Is that something that you're finding? Are there jobs available at Coke Consolidated? So, yes, Coca-Cola Consolidated is hiring. Uh, we have plenty of opportunities, whether um, you have a CDL license, um, if you are a trained mechanic, um, it kind of runs across the board, right? We have a lot of different opportunities from office, um, office uh, support. Um, we have warehouse positions open. So we're looking for um, a lot of uh, energy and excitement from our new recruits. And we offer amazing benefits. This company is um, you know, known for its culture. Um, our purpose statement is to honor God in all that we do, um, and, and really our teammates live that purpose each and every day. Um, so joining this company is kind of like joining a family, and we have many, many opportunities. So if you're just starting out in your career, uh, there are opportunities to join and then work your way up. Uh, we offer amazing pay and benefits. Um, you know, it just it's a, it's a really great environment to work in. Well, and, and Jennifer, while I, you know, take your word for it, but it's also backed up with the fact that um, Co-Consolidated was named to Forbes uh, America's Best Mid-Sized Companies in 2022. So that's something to be very proud of. What's the criteria for Forbes? How, how did Co-Consolidated um, learn about this honor? So, you know, I think that the honor essentially just, number one, is based on business results. Um, but I think that they take a kind of a more holistic approach. So uh, when you consider our company, our leadership team, the work that has been done um, to really generate strong business results um, despite the pandemic um, has been truly outstanding. Uh, we have had teammates working day in and day out. We were considered essential during the pandemic, um, providing beverages to first responders, um, and to consumers who are struggling to, you know, go to the store and, and find uh, food and drink um, to, to take back home. So it was a really tough time and our company really stepped up. Um, and I think that that is part of the reason why uh, that recognition came about. 
Um, I can't say enough about our leadership team and just the dedication of our frontline teammates. Well, congratulations to the leadership and, and all the employees at Co-Consolidated. Thank you. And, you know, Jennifer, one thing that really um, struck me about the company is a real commitment to sustainability. Can you help the audience understand what does that mean and what do you all do? Absolutely. So, um, you know, we have always believed in being a good steward of our environment, uh, whether that's through conserving water, um, whether that is pitching in with our community partners to do cleanups. Uh, our focus has really evolved, though, to focus on recycling, recycling education, awareness. And our goal right now in this space is to get every bottle back. So um, when you think about, you know, that bottle of Dasani or bottle of Coca-Cola uh, that you're, you take home, you drink, we want to make sure you're putting it in the right place um, so that we can get that plastic back. Um, you read a lot about plastic waste. It's not waste, it's recyclable. We can use it again and again, and we just need to make sure we're getting that back so we can use that recycled material in our products moving forward. Well, I know recently I um, purchased some shoes and they're some kind of plastic um, recycling in these shoes. I, I love these shoes, but I thought I never imagined that a bottle of water that I may have, you know, had previously are now on my feet. So I think it's really great that this is getting into so many different kinds of products. Absolutely. And, and although we appreciate that, you know, they're, that plastic is being used for, for things like shoes and and other things, we really want those back, um, that material back to put right back into bottles so that we're creating a circular economy um, and really eliminating our, our footprint there. And, you know, I had the pleasure of joining you uh, at Memorial Day weekend at the Coca-Cola 600. For those in the audience that may not be familiar with it, and I can't imagine anyone in the Charlotte region is not familiar with this. Talk a little bit about how Coca-Cola came to sponsor this NASCAR race and a little bit about the work that you do, because I know it's a heavy lift and you and your colleagues put a lot of time into making it such a special day. Of course, yes. Um, NASCAR and the, the Charlotte Motor Speedway are wonderful partners. Uh, we are the exclusive beverage provider uh, for both of those, those um, amazing teams. Um, so we do get the opportunity to host guests at the 600 um, and really just highlight and showcase everything that Charlotte has to offer. Um, the race is an exciting time to, to just come together Memorial Day weekend to honor veterans, um, and to really just um, demonstrate that, that, that feeling of excitement, um, you know, you, you get to watch the race and, and all that goes with that. Um, so it's a really good um, opportunity to do those things, but it's also a great advocacy tool. Um, we can bring in officials from all over the country to really see what we have to offer um, so that they can take some learnings back to, to various parts of our territory as well. You know, um, being a government affairs specialist, sometimes you are at the front line of the sausage making, right? So do you have any interesting stories of legislation that you really helped get to the finish line or, you know, stopped from, from happening? Any kind of war stories? <laughs> I don't know if I have war stories um, that I would actually dub a war story. I think that just from my perspective and my experience, for me, it's not even really an issue. It's more of a challenge and it's ongoing. And that is um, really helping our, our policymakers um, and thought leaders understand, number one, what our company stands for and what we're about, right? So that's just a constant process to make people aware. Um, you know, Coke Consolidated might cover 14 states, but we're your local bottler and we're your local bottler in those, those very small communities all across that territory. Um, and it's very important to us to engage the community in those ways. Um, so we don't take a corporate cookie cutter approach when we go to support our communities. We actually talk with local leaders. We find out what those needs are. Um, so as you can imagine, that that can be you know, a, a process and as leadership changes and evolves, we need to continue to tell our story and keep that front and center. Um, you know, being a, a 
good steward of, of all things in the local community is very, very important to our company. Um, so I, I, I know that's not really a war story, but it is an ongoing challenge. Um, so I think that's probably the biggest part of what we do as a government affairs team here at Cope Consolidated. Um, the other thing I'll call out, and, and again, kind of related to the pandemic, we had to learn how to do our jobs in a completely different way. And I know you can relate to this. You know, our job is, is definitely done in person. Um, you know, we talk with, with thought leaders and, and our advocacy is, is not necessarily, you know, um, ideal from a, a Zoom perspective, if you will. But we had to adapt to that. Um, and, our, and our team did a really great job. And I know there were folks across the country that had to do the same. Now, what about some, some big issues that maybe are on the horizon? You know, is water an issue for Coke Consolidated? I mean, we've already talked about workforce, but what other big issues do you see around the corner? Yeah, I think um, like many other companies currently, you know, inflation is, is a big deal. I think supply chain disruptions, supply chain shortages, those all impact our company um, from an equipment perspective, from an ingredients perspective. Um, those struggles definitely translate into business results um, and to what you see on the shelves, quite frankly. Um, so, you know, we're working hard. Our internal team does an amazing job managing through those issues. Um, but from an advocacy perspective, we just need to stay on top of those things. Um, you know, I will say also, you mentioned sustainability. Uh, that is definitely top of mind. Um, you know, we want to want to make sure we're doing all the right things to protect our environment and to be a good corporate partner in that space. So those would be my primary issues right now. And, and Jennifer, how many people are on your team? How many other government affairs specialists do you have in the 14 states? So we have a, a team of five. Um, so we cover multiple states. Um, we're spread out from uh as far west as Nashville, we go uh, up to Indiana, we cover the, the Mid-Atlantic, the Carolinas, West Virginia, and everything kind of in between. So um, we are a small but mighty team. Excellent. And what made you decide to accept the invitation to serve on the advocacy committee for the Charlotte Regional Business Alliance? That's a great question, Kelly. I think, you know, for me and my experience, um, you know, organizations like the Charlotte Business Alliance are critical to our success. It really provides a forum for us to be able to come together with other businesses in the local area um, so that we collectively can advocate for business friendly uh, legislation policy. Um, and we're just much more effective when we speak with that one voice. Jennifer, thank you for your time today. And again, really, I really appreciate your service on our advocacy committee and the support that the Alliance receives from Co-Consolidated. We are really fortunate to have someone like you here in the Charlotte region. And to the audience, thank you for tuning in. We will be interviewing other members of the Charlotte Regional Business Alliance Advocacy Committee and look forward to talking to you soon. Jennifer, have a great day and thank you. Thank you, Kelly. Take care. Thanks for tuning in. You can learn more about the Charlotte Regional Business Alliance and its advocacy agenda at charlotteregion.com.